Welcome to CISO's Insiders Podcast, powered by GRC Consulting. In this podcast, we'll be interviewing leading CISOs and security leaders in the industry for light, eye-level conversations. Here, they share advice and tips, talk about their biggest accomplishments and failures, favorite drinks, key influencers, and much more. We encourage you to walk away with at least one insight that will help you better yourself or your business. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more content, please check us out on social media. Hello, everybody. Today I'm speaking with Roy Besser. Uh, Roy is a virtual CISO, among others. He wears multiple hats at the moment. He'll be able to introduce himself in just a minute. What I can tell you about Roy is that he's been in the industry for quite some time now. Uh, he's been uh, holding a variety of positions, anywhere from um, risk manager, consultant, to more technical positions in the past. Your bio is, your bio is just too long, Roy. Maybe you can step in and tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, so um, I'm in this... Uh... IT slash network slash cyber environment for 30 years or so. Uh, started as a, as a technician in the Israeli Air Force, playing with uh, switches before there were routers, X25 protocols and stuff like that, uh, playing with uh, uh, encryption devices. And... From there, a smooth transition to an uh, Israeli ISP and following with uh, global companies, all as a uh, uh, regular employee, uh, punching the card every day. I'm working in this uh, field of uh, IT networking cyber for 30 years or so. Uh, doing a lot of uh, positions of uh, IT uh, network technician, playing with firewalls, playing with uh, encryption devices, uh, building uh, DPI solutions for uh, enterprises and ISPs. Uh, up until one day, I found myself uh, without a job as a startup that I was working in uh, was closed. And uh, from that point, I started to look what to do, how to harness my uh, knowledge, my hands, uh, hands-on hands skills, uh, and found myself uh, in positions of um, advising to CISOs with uh, those who ask for um, advice for networking, for firewalls and stuff like that. Uh, I was teaching cybersecurity uh, for some time. Um, this is it, more or less. Okay, uh, and that, uh, I mean, I, mean I, I believe that uh, inspired you to basically um, own your own business and found your own, own company, basically where you offer VC services and related to other services as well. And uh, I did uh, remember from last time that we spoke that you also mentioned that you are you have some sort of a role as a regulator for one of these entities. Maybe you could uh, share some light about that in 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 one of the upcoming questions here. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, before we get started, I uh, always like to um, you know get my interview just a little bit more, a little bit better. And I'd like to ask uh, if you're willing to share about your, uh, you know, marital status and maybe favorite drink. Okay. So, uh, happily married for uh, 26 years. Uh, three gorgeous uh, daughters. Uh, aging 25 to 10. Uh, those are the, the ranges. Um, live uh, in uh, Israel. A uh, beautiful city of uh, Ranana, and uh, running my business uh, nationwide, and uh, looking also a little bit outside uh, some uh, a joint venture with a customer of mine uh, for an operation in Europe, and another customer uh, tries to take me to India, back to India, to be. Uh, to be more accurate, uh, but uh, 
my focus mainly is uh, in the Israeli market at the time, at this moment. Um, and this is uh, actually my uh, specialty. I'm uh, uh, looking uh, to align uh, companies to the uh, Israeli law, uh, cyber law or uh, computer law, where it's applicable. And where it's not applicable, I'm trying to make one. And uh, as you mentioned, Ben, um, yes, I'm working in uh, a government agency in the Ministry of Finance uh, as part of a team that uh, regulates uh, cyber, uh, regulates cyber for the insurance uh, company and the savings and uh, some uh, small fintechs. Um, at the moment, this is the uh, second biggest uh, cyber regulator in Israel. Uh, this is, it is a second to the uh, Ministry of uh, the Environment. Uh, and amazingly, we have, uh, we have uh, the uh, Israeli National Cyber Directorate, but they are regulati regulating only a handful of companies uh, and no more than that. So um, it makes things a lot of, uh, it gives a lot of interest to the day-to-day -day job. Thank you for that uh, background. So let's dive right in and let me ask you, uh, you know, the following. If there's one thing that you wish you had known when you began your career, what would that be? That it's going to be uh, the biggest roller coaster I ever uh, ride on and I have fear of heights and I have a fear of speed, but this is a very crazy journey and I like, I, I love every moment of it. Nice. So uh, I take it it's interesting, but also uh, heart uh, wracking and, uh, and uh, unnerving at some time, at times. Uh, at, at times, yes. Uh, um, back in the year 2000, uh, going to work, uh, I used to work at uh, Converse, uh, that used to be, that was considered as the Israeli flag, IT, uh, IT or high-tech flagship. Um, May 2000, and I see smoke from out of one of the buildings, and we have a fire. And the main uh, backbone switch is burned. Okay, what we are doing, what we are going to do, what will happen, if, uh, first of all, fire brigade, then... We need to restore service. It, it took us less than 24 hours to restore service and employees were back in the building. But it was, that, that, that was the first adventure when I un understood that, hey, we need uh, uh, somehow to, uh, to put fire out in a, co a communication room and uh, server, uh, server rooms. Nobody thought about uh, using gas or uh, a, a automatic system to put out a fire. Then I started to look into more into uh, those kind of preparation of uh, DR and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So was that your first step in uh, a field that was uh, somewhat tangent to cybersecurity, uh, DR? Um, you can say you can say you can say it, uh, like that. Yeah, of course. In 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 the past, in 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 uh, when I was in an ISP and the in the early days, early stages of ISP and the electricity went down and uh, the uh, diesel in the generator went down and the batteries went off and suddenly blackout. Hey, no, no, one, hey, hey, no one thought to check or things like that. And a few years, many years later, I, as a regulator, I faced the same situation where uh, um, an insurance company, the CISO calls me and said, hey, listen, we had a problem. We had electricity outage. I said, okay, what about the generator that you have? What about the UPS? And they said, yes, we had a, we had a generator and uh, it worked, but it, it, with the uh, switchboard, with the electricity switchboard of the communication room of the server, of the server room, um, the switch didn't toggle between network and generator. And then we ran out of batteries. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, did you fix it? Yes, we fixed it. But 20 minutes later, the power went on, on the grid. 
and the switch didn't turn again. So they needed, they were out of business for almost five hours to restore servers and data and, uh, and those are things that I learned at the past. And then I'm guiding, I'm actually uh, asking those, I cannot tell them what to do or how to do, but I'm asking a, a, a guiding questions. Uh, how come you didn't have any uh, indication that the generator is not providing power and so on? So mm -hmm. that way they started to fix it. Yeah. And uh, looking back at your career, what would you say was your biggest failure and what did you learn from it? I can... Failures. Um... My biggest failure was that I didn't see the uh, reef and the fact that the startup that I was working in um, going to be shut down. I used to work at Converse and when I was in Converse, there were about five, six or seven uh, uh, cycles of uh, reduction of force that I can, I can, sur I survived because uh, I understood the politics inside it. Uh, later on, uh, a lot, uh, company, the, the company named a lot, uh, I survived, all the, there were also two or three cycles uh, of uh, a reduction in force, uh, and I survived it. But in that small startup, I couldn't understand or I couldn't realize the, 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 uh, the internal politics. And that was my biggest failure. Suddenly, at the age of 43, uh, you're without a job. Uh, but then, as the legends say, like the phoenix, I <laughs> you rose woke, the woke, woke up. Uh, yep. And then uh, I started to invent myself. Uh, I started to invent myself and started to, pro to provide my, my uh, uh, whoever wanted to hear me, whoever wanted my advice. And this that, that way I uh, formed my my own business. May, would you uh, care to? Uh, I mean, if it's okay with you, maybe we could uh, dive in just slightly more about uh, what may like in your opinion. Why didn't you? Uh, why weren't you able to see the uh, the warning signs that that uh, startup company? Um. I was there in a position uh, uh, that I was in um, mid-level uh, management and I was told by the uh, uh, co-CEO uh, that we are going to, to do some sort of a reduction in force and uh, he asked me to find a, a substitute solution for the uh, help desk to find an outsource. And I was busy in looking for outsource and I was busy in building a monitoring solution that the outsource will be able to monitor the customers. And I didn't, I didn't stop thinking, okay, we are going to cut the support. Uh, what will happen with the professional services that I was uh, managing? Uh, I was so focused in, in that task that I didn't stop for a moment to look in a brighter view uh, and see where it's going. Uh, and when that CEO uh, uh, gathered all the company in the meeting room and said that we are okay, we are fine, but we need to do this and that steps. Um, and I asked the, uh, the next people that I will name to stay in the room, I heard all the team members, I heard my name, and I said, okay, he's going to, uh, uh, to tell them when I'm sitting next to him. And then he looks around at the room and says, uh, okay, you're going to have a hearing in two days. And I see the QA manager, and I see someone from R&D, and someone from the uh, research, and I see myself, and I support him. So, um, yeah, I didn't see it coming. Um, 
And uh, at that point, I, I cannot say that I said I, I, I would not be a, anyone's employee anymore. I looked for uh, a, a permanent position at other places. But you know, 43, you are uh, too old uh, for uh, uh, to be managed by uh, uh, younger managers because they're afraid, because you have the knowledge, you have the skills. And when they don't ask you where you see yourself in one year, you understand that you didn't pass, uh, you didn't pass and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next best thing was to start to consult. And uh, probably I did it well. Um, because um, hey, seven years later, I... Still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think personally, I think consulting is one of those areas where uh, AJ is actually a benefit. Um, you know, it's easier for, um, uh, you know, customers and colleagues out there to talk with you in consumer services. There's a little string, almost no strings attached and they're willing to, you know, pay for good advice. So there's definitely an upside, uh, to consulting in my opinion. Um, yeah. And you know, glad to hear that you find your niche and, um, you know, with that, uh, what do you think you would have done differently looking back at your career? Um, my mother-in-law, she always asked me, do you think you good at, you are good at what you do? Or do you think that you need to go and be on a payroll and getting a paycheck from small or large company? I said, the only thing that I'm sorry is that I didn't do that earlier. Uh, if I knew that it will be so easy to build your own firm, your own company, to find a, a, a niche. But when, when I say it, it was easy, again, I'm looking back on a perspective of 30 years in this industry and doing one or two or three or 100 things. Uh, but this is something that... Um, I advise my daughters to to try to think of a, a find something a, unique that they can do a, in the area of a, 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 their skills. One is project manager, the other one is uh, a technician of UAVs. So um, mm. the idea is that you you need to think out of the box. You need to see the you, you need to you, tr you need to try, you should try to see the bigger picture um, and to always look for new opportunities, new horizons. Uh, don't block yourself. Um, as part of that uh, process, uh, I was going to uh, a coach uh, that helped me decide to do this step uh, uh, to become a, a my own boss, actually, my wife is my boss, but uh, the idea was to to rethink how I'm uh, rebranding myself, how I'm, how I'm building myself. And later on, uh, I did a mentoring course, so I'm also a certified mentor. So I see both sides. I was sitting in one side, in one co a, a couch, talking with a, 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 a with my uh, mentor. Uh, and then two years later, I'm sitting in her couch and mentoring others. So it gives you a brighter, a, a brighter look, a broader look on the uh, where, wherever you are, uh, and not only on the work aspects, on almost on any other aspects that uh, is there. It's like I think it was. Uh, some sort of life-changing uh, decision to do this kind of training. Yeah, and I, I know you just mentioned a couple of uh, names uh, or a couple of things out there that uh, helped you uh, along the way. Other, do you have any other, like, did you have any other resources, people, or whatever that might be that have helped you shape uh, yourself 
to what you are right now? Um, looking for good mentors uh, that will uh, guide you, that will uh, escort you. Um, at the beginning, I marketed myself uh, to, uh, let's say, to an integration companies or a, a someone that I find the DNA very close to mine. So they will do the uh, sales. They will sell me as, as a product. Uh, I'm not good at sales. And this is something I needed to admit in the, in the first day. I'm not a sales person. I'm not a sales guy. Uh, I did pre-sale. I did post-sale. But sales, it, sales it, itself, when I'm the product, uh, of course, you have the elevator pitch or the 30 seconds uh, uh, a, a first impression. Uh, but I found those, uh, uh, let's say, success partners that will push me towards the end customers. That was the first uh, uh, task that I um, that I did, and luckily I found three or four uh, partners like that that uh, uh, pushes me to towards those uh, interesting positions that I'm. Uh, actually doing okay so um basically building yourself uh, your channel uh, network partners network that was uh, very uh, instrumental in your success uh that's what i'm hearing and uh, in terms of um uh the market that you operate in maybe you can talk a bit about that a bit more about that because i know you have you know a lot of uh as, as you mentioned uh, you're wearing a lot of yeah. hats so maybe you can talk a bit about that um, so one hat as a regulator, I work in, in the, um, in the finance a, a arena in, uh, here in Israel. Um, I'm, I can say guiding, escorting, and if there is a need to, uh, to punish, to, to, uh, uh, those who don't obey, usually I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the punisher although I'm a little bit harsh with them. But when I go to, uh, um, to a survey in, uh, a, let's say, uh, uh, in one of uh, the companies that I'm responsible of, I always tell them embrace the auditor. Uh, embrace the auditor because whatever the auditor finds, you can still have the time and you still have the chance to, f to, to, to fix it. Uh, or to build a plan uh, how, how to fix it. And this is part of the mentor of me speaking, trying to guide them uh, to success and to improve their uh, security posture. And this is on the security, uh, on, this is on the finance uh, uh, side of uh, uh, the market. Uh, other than that, I'm not touching that a uh, kind a uh, kind of uh, uh, companies i don't want to have some sort of dilemma which hat i'm wearing when i'm coming to those uh, uh, companies um i'm working with uh, um large international company as a risk manager uh, where we are uh, in a process of changing the approach and the methodology of uh, risk assessment uh, if they will work on in one type of a method looking for, uh, um, let's say, vulnerabilities. We are looking now, we are tidying in the uh, business impact. We do, we, so doing uh, BIA business impact analysis to an international company is very exciting, uh, interesting. Um, uh, with other company, I have developed a cyber uh, cyber range to practice uh, cyber teams and not only cyber teams. Um, and with a additional uh, customer, it used to be a bank. I was uh, escorting the CISO during the transition when that bank was purchased what, or acquired by a different bank here in Israel. So I'm trying to, to, to find a things that will give me my, very, a, a lot of interest. So I could be a CISO for a company doing everything in one place, but 
I'm taking bits and bytes in different industries, looking from above, looking from above. Uh, for example, um, chemical companies that needs to work according to the uh, uh, INCD, Israel uh, uh, National Cyber Directorate. So I'm guiding them, I'm working with them to comply with those rules. Um, so th that's the beauty of being a, a virtual CISO or a CISO's mentor. Um, or as one of my mentors says, you need to be a, a, the CISO's trusted advisor. I said, I can be the CISO's trusted advisor, but I can be also the CEO's trusted advisor. And this is who I uh, try to be. Uh, and when I touch too much, a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, verticals in different markets, that opens the box. And yeah, and I think as a career advice, uh, whenever uh, you know I'm speaking to uh, people that are uh, uh, just getting into the industry and uh, you know being asked what's the best. Uh, like first step, so it's either you start up uh, at a very like specific position, like a technical position, could be a SOC analyst, could be anything around maybe SDLC, develop, secure development, could be around penetration testing, could be around GRC, uh, but also there's also the always the option of, um, you know, joining forces with a consulting company or an advisory company, because that's right. As you, as you said, the it's the the position itself would is likely to be more broad and would touch on more uh, security domains cybersecurity domains as well as compliance and would sometimes put you in a position to grow more rapidly sometimes it really depends on you know the organization and yourself uh but this is something that i all, also like to stress out and personally yeah i, I i'm with you i think uh Consulting gives you, uh, you know, more flavors uh, to your uh, daily work, and uh, more challenges, yeah. and it's more diverse. Yes, that, that, that's co that's correct. Uh, um, it gives more. Um, it gives the diversity. Uh, you meet more uh, more people in the industry. You're not tied up to one company, be it a big company with. 1,000, 2,000, 30,000 employees, but you see people from other companies, from other industries. Um, and one thing I like to do is to go to those uh, meetups, to uh, all the exhibitions. First of all, I, 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 I see old colleagues. Uh, last, uh, last session, I saw people that uh, you haven't seen for 20 years. So it's always good to see old colleagues to renew uh, old ties that uh, you ha you had in this uh, in this industry not just in this industry um, and it gives the the interest mm -hmm. I wake up in a, with a smile I go to sleep with a smile that's and the most how important. Do you, how do you play well with others I mean you're a vendor but you also you might be consulting to the CISO you might be, you know, holding a virtual CISO position, but you also, you'll probably also be hiring other vendors. What's your secret sauce in terms of how to play well with one another? Um, at the beginning, I thought that uh, I will need to um, get rid of uh, an old habit to become, a, a, to be a team player. Uh, I'm a team player. I always was part of uh, teams, and I see myself as as, a, as part of the team. When I'm going to work with a CISO, I'm part of the CISO's team. When I'm going to work with a CIO, I'm part of the CIO team. Um, that's that's. I think that's the that's the secret sauce. Be a, a person's person. Uh, be a team player. Uh, respect the others, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, and, um, uh, you know, we did speak a bit about the industry. Is there any common myths about the industry that you wanted to debunk? Sorry, come again? 
Is there any common myth about the industry that you can that you wanted to debunk? <laughs> A common myth. Uh... Especially for Israel, everybody says that uh, Israel is a cyber nation. And I, when I started uh, my my first step, I said, where's the cyber? They see the nation, where's the cyber? Uh, but at the end, at the end of it, uh, the cyber is with us, with the people. As I say, I, say, I would say that cyber is the linkage between the uh, human being and the machine. And uh, when they work together, work well together, then the cyber is uh, the the state of the cyber is fine. And so um, the the only myth that all the glory of uh, cyber, I think it was painted in pink, and uh, all the unicorns around it was to just to find a new way to get more money. Um, when I was, I was sitting in uh, one of the banks in Israel and I was asked to uh, uh, look into the logs of the S400, the mainframe, uh, because they had some scenarios where processes were stuck during a uh, critical time and trying to find a, a solution and the very first question I ask, why uh, at the time that the NOC, the network operating system, are busy, why the SOC, the security operations center, is not monitoring those machines? And they say, no, 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 you shouldn't mix, uh, you shouldn't mix cyber and, uh, and network, you shouldn't mix SOC and NOC, but eventually it's the same thing. And I think took this sentence as some sort of lesson learned. And uh, during a, a practice scenario that I was running with a simulator that I was part of, um, I was practicing, I was a, a, a running a scenario where the SOC team was trying to solve a, an incident where we had uh, um, a malware encrypting files and another malware playing with uh, CPUs, making them hard time uh, to find their uh, way around the uh, the network. And they were puzzled after three hours. So I said, okay, guys, stop at this point. Please call to one of the help desk engineers. The, the help desk, the PC engineers, I don't need a system guy. Five minutes later, all done, everybody, everything was fixed. Meaning uh, you don't need to be a cyber analyst uh, uh, to find a, a, simple, uh, a simple problem. You just need some technical, uh, uh, technical knowledge or the technical approach. Um, they did rewrite the uh, playbook after that uh, practice. Uh, mm -hmm. They did started to build their own uh, the in-house IR, combining uh, people from different disciplines instead of going out to and because they they were at 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 the level that uh, at that point they were calling the external IR. We have a problem. We have an issue. Instead of going to the uh, uh, to those who really can fix it in five to ten minutes, and they are in house at the next room. So um, this is one myth that um, I saw myself uh, uh, breaking apart. Uh, as eventually, as cyber is everywhere, cyber it's IT, cyber it's uh, the company's business. Um, when I was teaching a, a cyber practitioners, I was telling a, a my students that the security guard at the entrance of the building is part of your access control. So if he says that he works in, this, in the cyber industry, he works for the cyber industry. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. this is the myth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's talk a bit about uh, your relationship with customers. We were almost at the tail end of our episode, but I want to be able to squeeze in a couple more questions here. Um, so 
in your opinion, I know, I, I know you touched on that, but what would you say is the biggest difference between your role and the, the role of a full-time CEO? Um, I'm, I'm a visitor for a moment. Uh, I see the things that uh, the uh, full-time uh, in-house uh, overseeing missing look to the other side when they're passing uh, through it. And I have the privilege to say, hey, this is it. This is the hole. From here, the attacker will uh, will come in. Or this is where uh, the server will break first and not uh, the way that you think. And this is the beauty of it. I'm there for a moment uh, to see, to, to look, to see, to examine and pinpoint whatever uh, need, needs to be fixed. There are places that I come and say, okay, everything is fine, everything is okay. You don't need to fix whatever is working. But there are situations that I'm coming to a, 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 into a network, into an environment and they say everything is working and it's beautiful and it's fine and it's running on uh, Windows 7. It's fine. Uh, but uh, the firewall is wide open. And the good thing is that the domain is not COIL, so nobody is uh, attacking it. Or it's hosted in, I don't know where, in, in uh, AliCloud, so nobody attacks AliCloud. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the main difference. I can point to those uh, uh, issues uh, I'm not afraid to talk to the uh, CEO or to uh, meet in the corridor if the uh, the board of directors uh, are there. Uh, something maybe that uh, the uh, in-house uh, full-time uh, uh, will not do or will prefer not to do. That's that's the main. Uh, I think. I think this is the this is why they. Uh, uh, ask me to come in the first place. And, and let's say you start an engagement with a new customer. In your experience, what's the, typically, what's the biggest challenge when you start working with a new customer? Um, not stepping on too many toes. So no the, the politics, no the politics. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is part of it. Because, you know, I I, I was consulting in an, in a, um, in a company where the IT manager uh, considers himself as a, C, a CIO and he's also the CISO and he's the DPO and mm -hmm. everything is broken. But he says to me, the management, everything is fine. And he's working in the company for 25 years. So how I will do it uh, gently? I need him to understand that something is not working well. So yeah. putting a putting a uh, EDR with uh, one or two agents and they start the CD events, the alarms, and okay, I have an issue here that I need to fix. So yeah, you know that reminds me in a previous recording that I did a few weeks ago, uh, I sat down with a veteran CISO in the industry that um, told me about that mindset of having too many things on your plate, basically, you know, controlling everything. And, you know, some people do it for all kinds of reasons. Some do it because they want to keep their job. They want to make sure they have job security and all that. Some do it for other reasons. So he told me that one of his first mentors and, and bosses, he told him at one point, if you don't start delegating, I can never promote you. And I think for him, that made a difference because it, you know, forced him to, hey, you know what, I, I need to start uh, giving out some of my responsibilities so I could uh, pass the knowledge on and it's, understand it's not just about me. And basically that obviously that opened up a uh, few paths for him for uh, progression as well. So I, I see I see it as well, um, especially I, I, when you when you're a control freak, uh you get uh you get fatigue uh, and then you you see see so in small companies uh, every two years are uh, changing position moving to another company 
hoping that it will be better there, but they're still acting as a, they're still acting the same. Um, I had a situation where uh, um, CISO asked me what to do with uh, uh, with the uh, SOC employees, with analysts that uh, they were after a year, year and a half, they were uh, resigning and I said, start and do some sort of rotation among them. This week you are a, a first tier and you are second tier and you are the uh, shift manager and start to, to, to shift them between the jobs and they will, you will see that a, a, when a, that employee, that analyst become a shift manager, the next week when, when he will become back a first tier, It'll be a better his point of view will be changed. His point of view will be changed and he will try to investigate more and try to look more, in, more into, deep, into the logs and so on. And you will gain, you will, they will stay a little bit more uh, longer. So who would you say uh, your ideal customer is? <clears throat> My ideal customer is the customer that pays a time. No, <laughs> <laughs> put that aside. Um, customer that gives a, a interest that uh, um, they have issues not too much issues because then it will be hectic to fix everything. Uh, but maybe a, we will start to fix one thing and then we will discover another issue. And third issue a, that needs to not to be fixed, but in my perspective to be tuned a little bit, to be fine tuned. Um, because if it's need to be fixed, then build it from scratch, do everything, start from bottom up, rebuild it, uh, restructure it, because patching, it's not the right way. Um, and I give, I give always log4j, for example, the log4j inc uh, incident, for example, mm -hmm. where people rushed into patching the log4j and then it was like merry-go-round for about a month, month and a half of patching over patching over patching. Well, the only thing that you needed to do is to read a CV to understand that, that a, a flow actually causes the server to communicate in LDAP to an external server, to external IP to download the file. So why not to block in the firewall any mm -hmm. server that is not your Active Directory connecting to the Active Directory in the in 365, block everything from acting uh, with connecting with Elda. You don't need to patch that. That's, that's, this is the fine tune. You need to read, you need to understand how your network works, how your system works. You do the, that tuning and you can go back to sleep. That's it. So, uh, so that was your ideal customer. What's your uh, what qualities you don't like in a customer? Apart from the uh, pain, from the part that they're not paying. Mister Know How. Mister Knows Everything. Uh, the CIO calls me in, but the IT managers know everything, and everything is okay. Um, we have an issue, he's scratching his head, he said, I don't know exactly what is the problem, coming in the morning and everything works. What you did, ah, fix it. That's it. So this is a kind of, uh, this is my nightmare, those kind of customers. Um, without knowledge sharing, uh, the one that holds all the information to himself that this is what you said you mentioned as uh, job security but when you are in a position of you're managing the infrastructure you're managing the IT you're managing the uh, information department as you said you need to delegate you need to share information and for a time that I was instructor and I was uh, handling uh, a knowledge base in one company because you need to share you, uh, uh, you need to make sure that everybody knows how to resolve that problem. Otherwise, 
don't complain when you always get the uh, 2 a.m. call in the, uh, how things uh, should be done. Yeah, you know, in uh, in recent years, not in recent years, but in the last 15 years since uh, I started more transitioning from the technical realm to compliance or to the governance risk and compliance space, there is a term in uh, GRC that, uh, you know, they use it in all kinds of frameworks. The root cause analysis. The root. What's the root cause of uh, whatever happened, right? So, once you understand the root cause, you can actually fix the problem itself, not the symptom. And and uh, otherwise, you're just be chasing your tail and putting out fires. And but sometimes it's harder. It's much harder, especially at a well-established and mature organization, to you know go back and gut everything and then you know start building if, if you keep the root cause analysis for for yourself it will happen and the idea is to share it and uh if you find the root cause share it with your customer so uh, for the next time he will not call you for the same but he will evaluate your um right. your advice and mm -hmm. will call you back again for uh different issues, uh, different assistance, or even just to drink a cup of coffee together. Mm -hmm. Well, um, thank you uh, so far. Uh, we're almost at the end here. So one last um, you know, bonus question or the last question that I always like to end up with. If money was never an issue, what would you do different with your life? If money was never an issue, money is always the issue. <laughs> Even when you have too much money, uh, it's become an issue how to save it. Um, what the different I will do in a, with my... I don't think I would change anything. Um, I have a beautiful family. Um, my wife, my daughters. Uh, I do whatever I like. Uh, I have, I can have, I can say I have my dream job because, uh, as I said, I do what I like. I like what I do. Um, no, nothing to be to be changed. Okay, that's a valid and great answer. I've gotten that before a bunch of times, as you can imagine. Uh, you know, interviewing uh, close to ninety episodes by now, <laughs> a lot of people feel the same way. Um, what's the best way to connect with you online? Uh, sending me an email. Email? Uh, yeah, roy at cider.com. R-O-E-E -E 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 at cider, C-Y-Y-D-E-R.com. Or look for me on LinkedIn, Roy Besser, R-O-E Besser, B-E-S-S-E-R. Okay. Thank you for that. And we'll tag you on uh, LinkedIn once this is published. Um, what else did you want to have? Did you have any, um, you know, final thoughts that you wanted to end up with? Final thoughts? Um, always learn. Always go and study something. Uh, it's mind opening. Um, I went to law school. I didn't graduate. I didn't uh, become a lawyer, but uh, I know how to read contracts. This is one thing. I know how to read the law, at least here in Israel, and how to uh, uh, handle in uh, court when I'm uh, I was I'm I'm summoned to to give a uh, professional uh, 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 evidence uh, or a, a legal some sort of legal consul uh, consultancy. Um, find a hobby that would not kill you. Uh, I'm, I'm joking because uh, uh, I started to ride bicycle a few years back and uh, I decided to become a hero and uh, take a ride of 120 kilometers and uh, the next day I hurt my knee and I needed the surgery, so... Uh, Stay safe. And that's it. Thank you for that. Enjoy having the talk with you today, Rory. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be back.